going to talk about the tubular cast on, which is this beautiful flexible cast on and where this rib just sort of rolls on itself like that. It's quite lovely and it's perfect for the Saturday show. what the cast on looks like before you join it in the round. And you can see I have waist yarn, which isn't very high contrast, but I think it's pretty clear that it would be very hard to join this and twist it. And what you're going to need is some waist yarn. I always just keep a cake rather of superwash yarn in my tool kit specifically for this purpose, a crochet hook, and then you're going to size down a needle when you do this edge. To figure out how many stitches to start with, you take whatever you need, you divide it in half, and you add one. So for the sh Saturday shrug, I need 124. So if I divide that in half, it would be 62 plus one is 63. I'm of course not going to do that many. I'll just do enough so that you can see um, how we make that edge. So you start by doing a slip knot. Just take the tail end over the top, pull it through, and there's your slip knot like that. And it just pulls right out. So you cross it over the top, you pull a loop through, and I put that on the edge of my crochet hook or my stitch fixer or whatever it is. And maybe I even lay my crochet hook down and pull one or two through. I just grab some yarn, pull it through just to secure it. I've never found that it's necessary, but whatever. So I take my yarn under my needle and my crochet hook goes over the top and I pull it through. And now I have one stitch on my needle and then I bring the yarn to the back. That's the one stitch. I grab my yarn, pull it through. There's two, bring the yarn to the back. Grab my yarn, pull it through, bring the yarn to the back. So it's just, a, and it doesn't matter what size these are really. Um, I would do them loosely and not super tight just because you want them to be able to come out. But this yarn is going to be, it's waste yarn, I'm not gonna use it again. So continue to do that until you have the right number of stitches and I'll meet you back. For your last stitch, what you do is you'd just grab the yarn, pull it through grab the yarn, pull it through. Again, this is just to secure the edge. And then I go ahead and cut that and pull the last bit through. So now I have my waist stitches right here. So here I have 15 stitches. These are provisional crochet stitches. And that would mean if I have 15 that I had originally needed 28. 28 divided in half is 14 plus I add one so that's my 15 that's where that comes in so now I'm done with the crochet hook and what I'll need is my actual yarn and this first row is different than the other rows but you're going to knit into one of those stitches and yarn over so I knit into the first stitch I'm going to hold on to all those tails I'm going to hold my two strands together knit into that and then yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, all the way to Almost the end. to the end, I'm gonna yarn over and knit, and I finished that first row. Then I'm gonna turn my work, and you can see these pearl these are where I knit on the back side, so you can see a pearl. And whenever I encounter one of those pearls, I'm going to slip with my yarn in front. So I'm gonna bring the yarn to the front, slip it pearl-wise, bring the yarn to the back, and those yarn overs from the previous row are now going to be knit. So I'll knit that one. 
I'll bring my yarn to the front because there's a purl. Slip it purlwise, bring my yarn to the back, and knit. Bring my yarn to the front, slip it purlwise, bring my yarn to the back, knit. And I continue this all the way down the row. Okay, I'm at the very end of the row and I'm gonna slip that with my yarn in front and then I will turn. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I will, so I well, knit that first one and then I slip with the yarn in front, the purl. I knit, I slip with the yarn in front, the purl. I knit, I slip with the yarn in front, the purl. And I'm going to do this for this entire row. Final pass. So I'm going to turn and I'll take a look at this. And you can see that that's a purl. So if it's a purl, that means I knitted on the row before. So I'm going to bring my yarn to the front and slip it. And now knit. Okay, so I have all the way along here, I have knit the knits and slipped with the yarn in front. And so I'm at the very last one and I have slipped with the yarn in front and I'm about to knit this one. But this particular stitch is when we thought about how many stitches we needed at the beginning and we divided it in half and then we added one. Well, this is that one we added because we're going to knit this one to this one when we join in the round. So I don't really need to knit this last one. I'm on the smaller needles and I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna shortly switch to the larger needles. But uh, you can see how it's not gonna be confusing. There's no way I'm gonna twist this. It's a beautiful flexible edge. It's a beautiful finish in itself, the way it rolls. I'll show you on the actual sample. And I didn't really have to figure out a tail. I didn't have to get to the end of my number and have my tail be too short or way too long. So there was none of that. And let's carry on with the bigger sample from here. So I did my setup rounds on size eights. And so I will knit them onto, I'll knit this onto nines, but I'm first going to join the first stitch. You can see this is my working yarn and this next stitch is a knit stitch. So there's that knit stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, give myself, get these to the tip of the needle. So I'm working tip to tip. But again, it, you're carefully joining in the round so as not to twist, but it's pretty clear we're not going to twist. And this very last stitch that I had done, I had knit. And so I'm going to undo that knit because I actually want to knit these stitches together. So I'm going to bring my yarn to the back, place my beginning of round marker right there. And then I will knit these two together. I'm still on the eights as I do this just because it's easier. So I bring my yarn over here and knit those two as one. And I'm going to go ahead and purl one too. And this is the first time I, in a while that we'll have actually be purling and not just bringing the yarn to the front. But then I can start on just picking up my size nine needle over here and I can and give myself kind of pull these down so they're out of the way. And then I will rib these stitches onto my new needle. And I'm ribbing all the way around. I'm ribbing off of the size eight needle onto the size nine needle. And I'm gonna come to that stitch marker, purl, slip the marker, knit, purl, knit, 
and then the eights are done and out of the way. And now I have my project on nine. At this point, I can remove the waste yarn too. So I can give those um, a clip, give it a clip over here. And in one direction, it unzips really nicely. And on the other direction, it doesn't. And for the life of me, I never remember. So I just tug on it to see when it's this one. So if I just give it a little tug all the way around, you can see how it's popping and unzipping, which makes it really easy to take out. Because I used superwash, it just pulls right out. You can see that you can use this tail end then to just tighten up that edge. And when I look down to count, let me bring this a little closer so you can see. You can see that you have one, two, three, four rows done after doing all of that. And that's how you do the provisional crochet edge and then a tubular bind on for the Saturday shrub. It is a beautiful edge, as you can see here. It just kind of rolls really nicely. It's very flexible. You can see how flexible it is. And, but it does, these stitches, if I did it just directly on the nine, tend to be a little bigger. So that's why I went down to an eight, and then I start my regular ribbing on a nine.